In any normal year, uh, the events of the Arab Spring would have been the dominant question for British politics and policymakers. But it, because this was not a normal year, 2011, so packed with news from around the world, it meant it didn't command the attention of our political leaders that much. All the evidence is that the cuts have fallen most heavily on children and young people. So it's not at all surprising that it's been from young people that we've had most protest of one kind or another, rebellion on the streets. If there's been one big winner from 2011, it has to be Alex Salmond. You won't find the winner of 2011 in Westminster where Ed Miliband's failed to kind of make the impact he might have hoped to. Nick Clegg has gone from near zero to still zero and David Cameron has been an unpopular Prime Minister with unpopular messages. I think Britain, like most of the Western powers, has been caught in confusion by the Arab Spring. The truth of them is it's very, very difficult because while a lot of these regimes are undemocratic and ugly in their human rights record, they are allies or friends of the British government going back many years. So you haven't heard much uh, British calls for a spring in Saudi Arabia. You didn't have much British support for uh, the uprising in Bahrain. Uh, it is a matter of we want our friends uh, to stay put and maybe our enemies to be toppled in this Arab Spring. They would quite like a selective Arab Spring. I think today is a day to remember all of Colonel Gaddafi's victims. From those who died in connection with the Pan Am flight over Lockerbie to Yvonne Fletcher in a London street and obviously all the victims of IRA terrorism who died through their use of Libyan Semtex. Ed Miliband started 2011 um, looking like he'd almost been in suspended animation since he unexpectedly won the leadership um, in uh, 2010. When The Guardian broke the hacking story, I've heard from people around Ed Miliband that there was close huddles of people saying, what on earth do we do? How hard should we push this against News International? And it was um, Ed who made this personal decision to go on the attack and call for Rebecca Brooks to resign. There's no denying, apparently, that the hacking uh, of the uh, phones of Millie, the phone of Millie Dowler uh, took place on her watch. She was the editor at the time. She should take responsibility for that. And I don't think, frankly, closing down the news of the world uh, changes that. It was a big moment in the chamber for Ed Miliband, and it um, gave him a lot of standing with his own party, which allowed him to come through um, the conference season in reasonable spirits some months after that. Someone this year said that uh, Obama may be remembered as the unluckiest president but the luckiest candidate. And what they meant by that was, as a president, he's had a run of bad luck with the economy, uh, and maybe some people will say it was poor judgment, but with the economy failing uh, to ignite and, and to grow, still stuck in the doldrums during the course of the year. Nevertheless, Obama could be the luckiest candidate. The Republicans are making fools of themselves on the other side. Uh, one by one, they have risen in the form of Rick Perry or Herman Cain, and then they have crashed to earth, usually by their own hand with a terrible and embarrassing gaffe. The third agency of government, yeah. I, would, I would do away with the education, uh, the uh, <laughs> commerce. I, I, commerce, and let's see. I can't. The third one, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. Well, of course, the coalition promised a, a new politics, and one form of the new politics was meant to be is opening up Parliament, letting the people have more of a say on what the parliamentarians debated. Well, that arrived in 2011 with the first e-petitions um, being launched on a, a whole number of subjects, and some of those that people thought would be um, up at the top of the pops, as it were, on the e-petition charts, such as bringing back hanging for child murderers or whatever, didn't quite get off the ground. But what did get off the ground with this new politics were some rather old political issues, notably Europe. The great boil on the back of the Conservative Party that's been there for a couple of generations now about Europe had sort of rather faded away in, um, once the um, Lisbon Treaty was signed, because um, there's no prospect of another treaty. And so, as David Cameron and Nick Clegg were doing their deal a year and a half ago, it seemed quite reasonable to think that Europe wasn't going to be a massive uh, issue. But boy, oh boy, how events have since got in the way. What happened with the Lisbon Treaty can never happen again. It was wrong that basically powers were passed from Britain to Brussels without asking people uh, in advance. So our legislation stops that from happening again. 
Demonstrations don't win. They're small groups of people taking action, but they do change the nature of the debate. It's quite extraordinary how a small number of people with a few tents outside St Paul's Cathedral can suddenly generate the amount of debate they have about the kind of capitalism we have, about robber capitalism and the robber barons who've taken huge sums of money and don't pay taxes on it. Suddenly you get the Archbishop uh, writing in the Financial Times on the very subjects raised by Occupy. I think what we've learnt this year is how small protests by small unrepresentative groups, if they've hit the right subject, can generate huge national conversation. And we're going to see a lot more of that. Well, if we want a hero of 2011, I think many Guardian people in particular would say the Labour MP, Tom Watson, who really pushed the hacking thing up the news at a point where it wasn't a popular subject, at a point where it was seen as a political liability to do so. And until now, Tom Watson, both known, best known as one of the curry plotters who'd helped to bring Tony Blair down, but by Jove did he come into his own. A villain of the year has probably got to be Liam Fox, who, um, of course, was the main casualty from the cabinet this year but gave an extraordinary speech in which he seemed to claim that his dodgy dealings um, uh, with his uh, friend and advisor um, Adam Werity was everybody's fault apart from his own. And if we're looking for one to watch for 2012 maybe uh, the youngish Labour MP Stella Creasy. She's um, uh, been making an impressive bit of progress up the slippery pole so far and is catching more and more people's eye.